Ordinance number 11-12-154. Okay, item number three is the SSA levy. Uh, this is the special services assessment for Cranberry Lake. Uh, as we have the past couple of years, we will continue to levy the zero dollar amount uh, for the 2011 tax bill. We right. keep this alive. Uh, by, by doing this, we keep the option of reactivating the SSA uh, if need be, if so decided somewhere in the future. But we need to meet this requirement of claim zero in order to keep it alive. Is there a motion for approval? So moved. Second. Any discussion? Roll call. Trustee Staranowski? Aye. Priest? Aye. Duberstein? Aye. Daly? Aye. And Walkington? Aye. Okay, next item four, an ordinance establishing regular meeting dates and standing committee meeting dates for year 2012. We have a motion for approval. So moved. Okay. Any discussion? Roll call. Trustees Deranowski? Aye. Priest? Aye. Duberstein? Aye. Daly? Aye. And Walkington? Aye. Ordinance 11-12-155. This will be published. Okay, item 5 is a Grays Lake uh, Police Service Annual Report. So this is not a financial report, this is a report on, on the first year of service. So um, the service period is from July 21st, 2010 to July 20th, 2011. So we got this in November. Um, everyone has received a copy. I will be getting an electronic file of this so I can put, a, put it on our website because I want all the residents to be able to look at it. Um, also, it being this time of year, uh, Chief McCutcheon wanted to be here. He is at the Lake County Chiefs Association holiday function tonight. However, that being said, he will come to one of the January board meetings to talk about this in more detail and also talk about changes that they've made um, based on feedback. Because what's also included in here are the survey results. Um, hopefully everyone that's here in attendance recalls getting a survey in the mail from the Grays Lake Police Department and um, hopefully everyone filled that out and returned it to them. So that information is in here as well. Um, as well as statistics about patrols and uh, warrants issued, arrests, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. It's a very comprehensive report, um, uh, very good information, and uh, I, I like the way they do this and, and that they analyze it and, and look at where their strengths are and look at where their weaknesses are so they can address them. So we will get this put on the website. If anybody's anxious to look at a copy, you're certainly welcome to come up here and look at this. And please um, look for January meeting where we'll have Chief McCutcheon here to talk about it further. I'd like to point out that one of the stats is that, and I'm, I'll quote from the uh, book, from the booklet, as, let's see, as previously stated, the police department achieved a 90% overall service rating from the community. That's 90% satisfaction. That's real good. That's standard. My attention when you see that next, that looking on page 14 on the schedule, tragic detail, not on these streets on in the cranberry lake side of this. Not any Not any streets on the cranberry lake side of the village are listed. Only for speed trailer deployment. And service requests regarding traffic enforcement. We have Centennial. They're talking about it. It looked to me like these were the regular areas that they patrolled and we were listed. No, that's not regular. That's not regular traffic. That is where areas where they did a scheduled traffic detail, a special assignment. Which would be the speed trailer deployment, there's nothing on our site either. 
And there was? Um, yeah, there's Centennial south of Oak. On what page are you looking at? At thir page 13. She's looking at 14. Yeah, I understand, but she, if she's talking about screen trailer deployment is on page 13. There's service requests at the top. There's several categories. So service requests regarding traffic enforcement. We have uh, speed trailer requests, Centennial Drive. I know Centennial was very talked about a lot uh, in regards to speeding issues. And I think Trustee Daranowski, you brought that up as well as several other residents. That was a request, but then when it says deployment, it never came up. It doesn't look like You're it. talking about Oh, yes, I'm Yes, it does. It's at the bottom. It's at the bottom. It's July 14th. It was there. I know it was there. And yeah. I think John knows it was there. Yeah, it was there. Yeah. But certainly we'll be happy to. Okay. So it didn't look like it was the, So you something on 12 -0? And they do regular patrols. That is not what this area is addressing. Oh. This area is talking about specific traffic details okay. where an air area has been either identified by an official, a resident, or an officer to say, we're going to do a special detail here. Okay. I misunderstood. I thought it was just a list of all the patrols. And no, patrols is under the patrol area. Believe it if they didn't, they know that they control because I've seen them many times. So, okay. I'm sure they're not going to post what time they're going to be coming down the street. <laughs> <laughs> I was saying this because your side was all, that side really was all law abiding. Well, that's true. Okay, any other Questions in regards? I will, I will let Matt know that we certainly would like um, uh, him to expound on that. Also, um, based on some of that feedback, and remember the Senate in July, we have done much more traffic, you know, detail since then. So when you talk about August, September, and October and what's gone on, there's been a lot more activity. So keep in mind that this did end, it was the first year statistics. So. Okay. Okay, <clears throat> let's move on to CENCOM status. Um, as Jim Rock mentioned, uh, we did attend a special meeting of the CENCOM Executive Board and the uh, Joint Emergency uh, Telephone System Board on November 15th. And uh, Reader's Digest version, I'm happy to say that much was accomplished. Two votes took place. The first vote that took place is 50% of all our 911 surcharge funds will be forwarded to the village of Grays Lake for Glenview as long as they are dispatching police services for the village of Haynesville. Haynesville attorney Jim Rock and the CENCOM attorney John Kelly are putting together a simple intergovernmental agreement to address this. Because of the state statute on 911 surcharge funds, uh, we want to make sure that this agreement fully complies with that statute. And so there is a draft underway as we speak that's being reviewed. Um, the second vote that took place is Haynesville will remain a standing member of CENCOM with full voting authority, excluding the funding formula as long as dispatch services are not utilized which means that since we're not paying for dispatch services, if a vote was taken of how that was going to be charged, uh, the representative on the board, which now currently that is me, would abstain from that vote. However, Haynesville would exercise full voting authority on all other issues. And because of that, we will pay our proportionate share of the rent and the liability insurance for the building. Now, the interesting thing about this, that 50% of the 911 surcharge fund that I talked about that will be forwarded, just about as a wash, equals the amount that we will end up paying in rent and liability insurance on a, year, on a yearly basis. So it's pretty much a wash. And that is just to safeguard the village of Haynesville that in future years, 
uh, if we ever felt we wanted to change our situation or our, our services, we would be able to go back to CENTCOM um, and not have to go back there as a customer, but would still be a owner of the system. So, um, just as a side note, it doesn't have to do with those votes, but I also want to emphasize that what's currently being worked on, but it's going to take time, is getting all of Lake County on the same CAD system. So a lot of these issues really, you know, about where the call gets bounced to and transferred to, really uh, everybody will be on the same system and can see and hear what each other is doing, which will make a much smoother system. So uh, we're certainly pushing forward to get that take and move forward as quickly as possible. So the good news is this has allowed us the opportunity now to move forward with an agreement with Grace Lake in compensating them for our dispatching. Um, we have not been paying for dispatching services um, since May. And so Grace Lake has been paying the added cost. Um, the first year they were willing to do that. The second year we had helped to have things work out, so we've been a little delayed in behind the eight ball. And that's what leads us to item number seven. Um, as a good faith effort, as we are working on these agreements, um, we're asking tonight for the board to approve a payment of $20,000 to the Village of Braves Lake for dispatching fees, um, which is only a portion of the money that we potentially owe them. Um, we want to make it as a good faith gesture. They've been paying uh, $4,833.53 per month for the additional dispatching. So, if you calculate that since May, um, that's about $40,000 or so. So this is about half, if you will. So that number will, in our negotiations, um, come out to what it comes out to because we're also looking at, um, we have supplied the Grace Lake PD with a storage facility in our new public works building. Um, and so we're going to work out something for a rental agreement to offset some of that cost. So that will be moving forward in January, and if not finalized in January, we would hope that we'd have that all finalized by February. If I can have a motion for approval of that payment to the Village of Grays Lake of $20,000 for dispatching fees. So. Second. Any discussion? Roll call. Trustee Staranowski. Aye. Grace. Aye. Duberstein. Aye. Daly. Aye. And Washington. Motion carried. Yay, we're so excited. <laughs> okay, item number eight is a proclamation for January 2012 uh, declaring uh, the month as Lake County Crime Stoppers Month. If we could have a motion for approval. So Second. Second. Roll call. Trustees Dernoski. Aye. Grace. Aye. Duberstein. Aye. Daly. Aye. And Washington. Aye. Motion carried. Item nine is the alternative energy ordinance uh, for review. Everyone has received the final draft. Um, also, we passed out this evening some comments with corrections from Trustee Daly. So everybody should have a copy of that. Is there any other discussion at this time? If not, your job is to review this between now and January and to please speak up and uh, either email uh, me and Kathy and Jim Rock and let us know if there's any additional concerns or corrections. Um, we need to approve this uh, at the first January board meeting, that's our goal because that's where the moratorium ends and I would like to not have to extend that moratorium anymore. Um, there's been a lot of good work put in and extensive research and I think we've got a real, really good document here. So I'm feeling pretty good about it, but there's always those final tweaks. So um, let's be ready for our January public hearing so we can adapt it later that night. 